At the Kauffman Foundation, we've been committed for years to entrepreneurship education. Today, I sit down with the president of Kauffman Fast Track, Alana Mueller, to talk about the 20th anniversary of this great legacy program of the foundation. I'm Tom Rue, and this is Top of Mind. Welcome to the Kauffman Fast Track Global Women's Summit. Kauffman Fast Track has been offering courses to entrepreneurs for nearly two decades. So we've trained nearly 300,000 people to start or grow companies. And so one of the things that we can now offer is very tailored, specific courses that will help to meet the needs of veterans in particular. I'm Hunter Browning. I'm CEO and co-founder of Finnect. Finnect is a mobile sports app that's formalizing what it means to be a sports fan. The Fast Track program for me in high school really showed what it was going to take to take an idea or a cool technology I'd worked on to become an actual business. Being able to run through every lesson set in the Fast Track program kind of brought value to each portion of the actual business side, which was never something that I was as naturally drawn to as the product side and the invention side of all my stuff. It really wrapped it all up together and made it something where I can actually turn it into something real. My name is John Gordon Jr. I'm the executive director of Kansas City-based Boys Grow. We are a local nonprofit that uses farming and agriculture to teach entrepreneurism to city boys. We take a 10-acre plot, we hire about 10 to 15 local kids, they come out and work the land and get paid, and then we create a business out of that where the young men actually learn how to farm, grow the produce, sell the produce, and be businessmen. The course was on a Thursday and we would get information, and then the following Saturday we'd have a business meeting with the youth. So on Friday, I would take what I learned in the Fast Track course and kind of strip it down a little bit and then Saturday directly apply that to the young men that are creating their products. My name is Lindsay Patterson. I'm the owner of Coffee Girls Cafe. I did the Fast Track Growth Venture. One thing I've learned about small business ownership is that it's a lonely gig. You're kind of out on your own. So I wanted to develop that network and have a guiding force to help me to the next step and Fast Track definitely delivered on that. The network outside of our immediate class is huge and it's something that you know I'm proud to put on our stamp of achievements that we're Fast Track graduates here. We're very excited to launch our 20th anniversary celebration of Fast Track and for all of these 20 years, though our structure has changed, though the content has been updated, our mission remains the same and that is to train entrepreneurs to start and grow companies successfully. Thank you, Mr. Gay. I'm here today with Alana Mueller, president of Kaufman Fast Track. Alana, thanks so much for joining us today on Top of Mind. Thanks for having me. So um, I think I'd like to start with the beginning of Fast Track. Yeah. Uh, perhaps you can, for the viewers of Top of Mind, share with us What's the history, the background of this really uh, important program of ours? So Fast Track was actually created in the late 1980s by two professors at the University of Southern California. And what they saw going on in their own city was poverty, violence, and unrest, largely the result of unemployment. So their idea was if we can create some method, some way to empower people to create their own jobs, we can get them up and off the street working again and really stop the cycle of poverty. What a novel idea. It huh? was wonderful. And, you know, they thought if we can only do this, even in our own city, it's making a difference. And so they did, and it started working. People would come to these one day workshops and they'd actually go and start more micro enterprise types of businesses, but they got them started. So our founder and benefactor, Ewing Kaufman, learned about this and he thought, you know, if it's working in the city of Los Angeles, I wonder if it could work in my city, in Kansas City. Mm. So he scheduled this one day pilot in January of 1993 and the, the funny part of the story is he schedules this pilot, 1,300 people signed up to come. Wow. And then, in January. In no January. And, and that's an important, it's an important part of this because the night before this huge event, 
Kansas City received one of its worst blizzards in history, about nine and a half inches of snow. Murphy's Law. Of course. And uh, somebody from the foundation called and said, Mr. K, I'm sorry, we're going to have to cancel your fast track event scheduled for tomorrow. And he said, no way. If even one person shows up, we will have done our jobs. I promise this to the people of Kansas City. And they said, well, not even one person will show up. And he said, well, we'll see. So it turned out they were right. Not one person showed up. And instead, 900 people showed up. That's wow. Right. So, you know, uh, as, as one of the speakers said, it was sort of the, the true test of entrepreneurship, uh, entrepreneurial prowess to say if they could make it through the ice, sleet, and snow, then right. truly they were entrepreneurial. So it was an overwhelming success. And he thought, you know, after feeling very proud of himself, he thought, you know, if, if we could get 900 people to show up on a day like this, this is something people are clearly hungry for. And uh, so he bought the rights to Fast Track and commercialized it in 1994. So did, did he buy it outright or were the original architects also part of making the version that we brought to Kansas City? Yeah, they stayed on. They actually helped to, uh, to commercialize it, take it primarily across the country. And uh, for about 16 years, Fast Track was a program that was delivered across the United States. And uh, during that time, while Fast Track was sort of a philanthropic program focused very specifically on the domestic U.S., the Fast Track program reached about 300,000 entrepreneurs. Wow. So um, how is the Fast Track curriculum you know, delivered and offered and distributed? So uh, predominantly, the, the courses are offered as live, face-to-face, -face, classroom-style settings. So people still come to class. Usually, it's, traditionally, it's offered over about 10 weeks, uh, usually at about three hours at a clip. Uh, each course is about 30 hours, and it's delivered now around the world by uh, affiliates, our affiliate partners, kind of an, a network of organizations. And the organizations vary. Some are academic in nature. Some are business incubators and accelerators. There are government agencies uh, that are part of our affiliate network. Uh, but these organizations come together and they say, you know, we think we could make a difference in our own local communities. So. What they do is they license our content, we train them in our methodology, and then they deliver the classes to local entrepreneurs. Now, so, do they do they localize it? I mean, is it do they take the the version that you know we've put out there and sure. then deliver it as is, or is there like customization that can happen? Well, you know, that's a it's a, a really interesting point. I think it's always important, really, for any course to honestly know your audience and so to the extent that you have a specialized group or a group maybe in a, a country outside the United States it's always important to either customize or localize uh, the, the information somehow to really speak to that audience. That said the core content itself is really appropriate for a broad array of entrepreneurs all around the world so uh, while, while the core course courses themselves uh, really provide the foundation and the information that an entrepreneur needs we always encourage our facilitators to think about what would the specific audience like to see or like to use that will make this more relevant for them. Hmm. Speaking of knowing your audience, um, there isn't just like one offering, right? As I understand it, there are different tracks within the Fast Track program. Um, can you like discern or explain like what those tracks are and what the, the intention is to have these different offerings? Sure, absolutely. We have uh, really four core courses. Uh, the the primary course, the one that is the most popular, the most often used around the world, is called Fast Track New Venture. Again, it's a 30-hour course that's really for anybody with a new idea, or even sometimes we see people with young firms, very sort of nascent businesses, where they haven't done the planning that they think they need to have done in order to really get the business uh, gener generating uh, revenue. And so they do still come, even as uh, young as maybe two years old. So this is, again, for startups and then very young firms. Birth to two years. Approximately. Uh, the, the, there's another course that's also for startups, and it's called Fast Track Tech Venture. Uh, now, this course is similar to Fast Track New Venture, but the difference is that it's really for technology and science-based startups. So the, the differences may be uh, more focus on intellectual property protection or succession planning for a technology company, fundraising for a technology company, these nuances that really make technology firms slightly different than sort of your standard startup. So if I'm going to launch the next Facebook, I'm going to be tech venture. Probably. Okay. You probably Got are. It. Yeah. 
Um, what we most often see in tech ventures, sometimes some internet-based startups, although new venture can also work for them. Uh, we see medical device startups, uh, drug discovery startups. So Fast Track Growth Venture is slightly different. It's for entrepreneurs who have been in business. They're, they already have established businesses that they're not looking to do business planning for. They're looking to do strategic planning to take that business to the next level. So is this like they're stuck at a certain stage in the growth of the company or and they're looking to get unstuck or is it just kind of like help me get to the next stage? Yes is the answer. It's, okay. it's sort of both. It can be, you know, a firm that has has been operating very effectively and maybe they see a new trend in the marketplace that they're not prepared to address. And so maybe it's time to think about how do I take my business to the next level? How do I reach a different audience? How do I tweak my product offering so that it remains relevant in this marketplace? The fourth course is, is slightly different. It's called Planning the Entrepreneurial Venture. And it's really focused on an academic market. So we often see high schools, we see community colleges, and sometimes we see universities offer what we call PEV. Mm -hmm. And it's it is very much like Fast Track New Venture. The pacing is slightly different. It matches more of your, your typical college semester, if you will, or high school semester. And what this does is you can certainly start a business with the knowledge that you gain from planning the entrepreneurial venture. But the nice thing about this is it's also good for the student who may or may not be interested in starting a business but really wants to understand what is entrepreneurship and what could this mean for me. That makes sense. You know, there's, as we know uh, firsthand here at the foundation, um, you know, the world of entrepreneurship education is changing very rapidly. Um, what is Fast Track doing in particular to make sure that its, you know, curriculum is current and relevant and, you know, meeting the needs of today's entrepreneurs? Absolutely. We are constantly keeping our curriculum up to date in terms of adding new information noticing trends largely as a result of our relationship with the Kauffman Foundation where we're keeping up prized of research, making it available both to our affiliates around the world and then of course to their entrepreneurs. And additionally we are on sort of a revision cycle where every couple of years the full content is reviewed and kept up to date. Um, so here's a, an interesting question, you know, um, we are just filming this on the heels of Global Entrepreneurship yeah. Week. Uh, which is a very big week for the foundation and, and the world of entrepreneurship at large. Um, how much of the growth uh, in Fast Track has been now uh, foreign versus domestic? It would be difficult to give you a specific percentage, but what I can tell you is over the past year in particular, we are seeing our international interest in Fast Track skyrocket. Uh, we, um, three years ago, for example, we were only a U.S. Uh, come, we're only delivering to U.S. organizations. Today, you can find us in Canada, uh, throughout South America. You can find us in Europe, in Africa, in Asia. So we really are seeing sort of this proliferation of not just entrepreneurship, but for our purposes of delivering entrepreneurial education to entrepreneurs. So I think the uh, secret of U.S. entrepreneurship is kind of catching on it's in other parts yeah, of, the, right. of the world. <laughs> Well, you know, I, I often say that when it comes to entrepreneurship, it takes one to know one, or the, the cruder expression I use is a skunk smells his own kind. Um, how is it that you find yourself leading this group that's training entrepreneurs? What's your background to get here? Well, I say part of it's serendipity. I feel very fortunate and very privileged to be here. But uh, for me, I'm, I'm originally from Kansas City. I had been away for about 10 years and was brought back actually by Sprint, which was one of the major corporations here in Kansas City. And I was an executive with Sprint for 10 years. And uh, what happened to me is I, I went to a one-day conference in Chicago, sort of a professional development opportunity. And uh, I was bitten by that entrepreneurial bug. And I, I wondered what I was still doing in corporate life. So it was time for me to go and, and create my own firm. And so I left my job. And the first thing I did was I took Fast Track New Venture. And so uh, the, one of the things I'm, I'm very proud of is our entire team is comprised of Fast Track graduates. So in, in some ways, we can say we've, we've eaten our own dog food. We, sure. Uh, we, um, we're not just helping to, to put Fast Track around the world, but we can honestly attest to the fact that it, it, has, it can help entrepreneurs just like us. And now we use our same methodology for the company itself. So You took a Fast Track course mm -hmm. to start a business? I did. I ended up starting a small consulting firm. And... Um, the Kauffman Foundation was actually my second major client. Oh, that's and, nice. Uh, and the project, it was, it was wonderful. And uh, the project was to look at uh, finding a new business approach, a new business plan for Fast Track. 
And uh, that was in February of 2010, and it's been a wonderful ride. I, I feel very fortunate to be here. That's great. So that's been you know an incredible ride and journey for Fast Track. Um, you know, it's such a, a historical program of the foundation. So now I'm going to ask you the big question, right? Looking into the future, what do you see the future for Fast Track? Maybe I'll ask it this way. Where do you see it in five years? Yeah. Well, the thing I'm most excited about is that we have this vast community, a global community of people who have been associated with Fast Track. So whether it's the 350,000 alumni, the untold numbers of facilitators, coaches, program directors, guest speakers, investors, et cetera, I, I think that uh, there's an opportunity really to bring people together. And so this notion of a community is something that I'd really like to see us grow. And uh, you know, in thinking about the future of Fast Track, I can't help but really think about the past. And one of the things that I'm the most proud of is that now after 20 years, uh, our mission really remains the same, and that is to help entrepreneurs start and grow companies. And on that, that snowy day in January of, of 1993, uh, Mr. K, I think, said it best. He looked out at this group of 900 people in the audience who had come out in the, in the rain and the snow and the sleet, and he said, you should not choose to be a common company. It's your right to be uncommon if you can. You seek opportunity to compete, you desire to take the calculated risk, to dream, to build, yes, even to fail, and to succeed. And that continues to hold so much meaning, not just for me, but really for the entire Fast Track team, and I think for the entire Fast Track community. Well, I can't think of a better way to conclude than on Mr. K's very own words. So, Alana, thank you so much for thank joining you. me today on Top of Mind. A pleasure.